Okay, so let's get, go back to basics and uh, look at mobile communication standards, which are the target technology we're actually attacking here. So back in 1999, we got 2G or GSM, which kind of uh, revolutionized the way we communicate. We were now able to communicate through handheld devices while staying mobile. Uh, unfortunately, 2G has been considered broken for several years now. Um, further on, we have 3G or UMTS. Uh, UMTS allowed us to browse the web with a decent internet speed. Unfortunately, another standard that, are, that is being considered broken. Uh, today, 4G is the most adopted standard. Um, and it's basically considered secure, but uh, in this talk, I'm going to show you that it isn't. So we're establishing that 4G is the target technology we're attacking here. The way we're going to do it is by using an IMSI catcher. So first things first, an IMSI is the permanent identifier of a 4G subscriber. Okay, so it's kind of like a, a client secret without an expiration date. And an IMSI catcher is essentially a fake base station, which acts as a completely normal base station. And uh, the, the IMSI catcher, it attracts cell phones to connect to the IMSI catcher. And once the cell phones are attracted to the, to the IMSI catcher, you can do various attacks against the cell phones. So the first attack I'm going to show you is simple IMSI catching. Uh, and as I mentioned, when you have the IMSI catcher, you need the phones to connect to your IMSI catcher. And it's defined in the LTE standardization that uh, cell phones perform handover based on prioritized frequencies. So by configuring my IMSI catcher with the highest prioritized frequency among the nearby base station, all the phones will automatically connect to my IMSI catcher. And when it does that, it sends some tracking area update request because it sees a new base station. This part doesn't contain any useful information for me as an attacker, so I'm just rejecting this message. When the phone receives this rejection, it initiates a, an attack request message. And in this message, the attached request, it sends its identity. Unfortunately, this is only the temporary identity, which I have no interest in. I only want the permanent one. So I return with an identity request, requesting the phone to send, send it permanent identity, the IMSI. The phone sees no problem with this and just passes the IMSI along in the identity response message. And voila, you have the IMSI. So the final step is to disconnect the phone. You're doing this in an attach reject. And in the attach reject, you're attaching a rejection cause. And in this case, I'm attaching the no suitable cells in this area. This disconnects from the IMSI catcher, and the phone jumps straight back to the original legitimate network. So you might think, OK, now I have the IMSI. Now what? With the IMSI, you can, for instance, uh, initiate phone calls. You se can send text messages based on another subscriber. Okay, And um, you can also do location disclosure. Uh, you can track movements. You know. Uh, if you, when you're getting all the MCs, you know where they are located. Um, and um, uh, for instance, I can bring this MC catcher near your workplace. I can detect when a person enters the building and when he leaves. If you want to take it even further, I can bring this MC catcher to your home, your private house. I can detect whether you're home or not. And if you're that kind of person, you can, okay, there's nobody here, I can do a break in and stuff like that. The second attack I want to show you is denial of service. It's the exact same message flow as the previous one. I've only included the first and the last message here because the important uh, thing we're doing here is the when, in, when you're disconnecting the phone from your IMSI catcher. Uh, because in this scenario, I'm attaching a rejection cause called LTE and non-LTE services allowed in the attach reject. So when the phone receives this message, it goes like, OK, there's no 2G, no 3G, and no 4G. The phone goes into ghost mode. It won't search for any other base station until it's rebooted. <laughs> yeah? And the, the, the vulnerability here is that none of these messages have encryption nor integrity protection. So that's, that's, the, that's the weakness there. So the third attack I want to show you is to downgrade to 2G 
or 3G. Again, the exact same message flow. I'm just changing the rejection cause parameter, which is in the attached reject message. So this time I'm saying LTE service not allowed. So it won't search for LTE. It will go to 2G and 3G. Remember I told you that 2G and 3G, both of them are broken. So for instance, if the phone jumps to 2G, there's no mutual authentication in 2G. So you can do a full man in the middle attack with an MC catcher. You can basically sniff all messages, all phone calls that goes between the phone and the real network. Cool, right? So if you want to try this attack yourself, if you want an MC catcher, <laughs> you have two choices. The first one is to buy a Stingray 2. Uh, this is basically an MC catcher out of the box. The problem here is that you have to work in the FBI to actually be able to buy one. The other thing is that the price is almost 135,000 US dollars, which, which in Norway is basically this equivalence of two Teslas. So, but if you like fancy cars and still want an MC catcher, you have an alternative, alternative, which is to build your own by using a USRP, a radio peripheral, which costs 765 US dollars, which is the equivalent of Elon Musk's flamethrower. <laughs> Probably have more fun with the flamethrower than the Teslas. But, uh, so this is what I did in my experiment. I built my own. I used an USRP, as I mentioned, from Ethos Research. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, from Atis Research, uh, which handle all the transceiving part. For the logic, I use the open source interface, uh, open source software called Open Air Interface. Simple, right? So, how common are actually MC catchers in, in real life? According to the Norwegian Security Police, it's not, uh, there's no evidence that there actually exists MC catcher in Oslo. Not going to comment on that article, but if you're ever going to use one, <laughs> do it in a foreign data cage so you won't attack innocent subscribers. So I'm going to demo this live now. No <laughs> no. Uh, just kidding. Um, my, <laughs> my boss sits right over there. I just want to freak him out. <laughs> <You're fired>. so, <laughs> so hold your horses. Because if I were to do this, I would probably end up <laughs> I would probably get a lot of trouble and possibly end up in jail. <laughs> because you're, you're breaking, breaking the law, you're doing a lot of crimes. Um, you're stealing identities, you're stealing the IMSI, you're doing mass surveillance, you're monitoring person movements, and all of these are part of breaking the, priv the privacy of the subscriber. So how can you as subscri subscribers prevent yourself from such attacks? I'm afraid I have bad news there. <laughs> There's really nothing you can do. It's totally up to the mobile operators, and even the mobile operators are limited because this is a vulnerability that exists in the LTE specification. So on that bombshell, this was Hacking 4G and how to get arrested in 10 minutes. I'm Christian. Thank you.